The Solaris Yard in Italy builds some of the most attractive boats around, and today I'm going to show you around their very latest model. This is the new Solaris Power 52 Coupe. Now, prices for this beauty start at 1.39 million euros, ex taxes, but realistically, by the time you've kitted it up, you're probably going to be talking more like 1.8 million. But for that, you get one of the best looking boats around and we are going to show you every single detail of it inside and out. So stick with us and you will have the treat of a lifetime. My name is Hugo Andre. You're watching Motorboat and Yachting. Let's go and tour this boat. The 52 Coupe is based on the 52 Open model, which always had one of the most voluptuous hulls around. Just look at the different sculpted surfaces on there. Now this particular boat is painted, it is a very unique metallic gold colour, and I suspect that adds considerably to the price, but it does look very, very cool. And it's a theme that you will see all the way around this boat. It's absolutely beautiful detailing. Just check out the teak on this hydraulic bathing platform. Absolutely honey coloured with that grey strip between it. Looks stunning. And even things like this tender garage, look at the curves and the beautiful finish of those mouldings there. Now under here is a tender garage. I'll demonstrate that, but you can get a 2.4 metre tender in there. Not quite big enough for a Williams mini jet, unfortunately, but you can get a rib in there and this opens up and there is a track that allows the boat to slide straight down into the water. And this platform here is of course hydraulic too. Now in this mode, we've got it in sort of sun pad mode. It's a relatively small one at this, in this setup, but that's because it is only half the sun pad. That whole table drops down there is then an infill and the whole thing becomes one massive sun pad. But it does mean that you've also got the option to lift up this backrest and I hopefully can do that one handed. Lock that into place and then you've got support for when you're sitting around the dinette table. Now big square shaped table. It is a fixed table. There's no folding elements to it, but it is a high low one. We've got buttons over here that you press and that lifts it up and drops it down. Now they are relatively low backrests, but they should provide enough support. And of course it means there's plenty of space. You can get at least two people around each side of that table. And then you can get a couple more sitting here on freestanding chairs. So you could happily have eight people sat around the table. Now it is a traditional walk around design and that's always been one of the selling points of this boat. It's very, very easy to move around. And this is what I mean by these incredible curves. Look at that. So rare to see that on the top sides. Normally you'll just have a fairly flat molding, but this is all part of the style of the boat and beautiful teak cappings all the way along here. The other thing you'll notice is there are, there are no traditional stainless steel guardrails, but because you've got these deep bulwarks and they really are, they come up to about kind of hip height on me, it's still plenty safe enough to walk around. And of course, one of the issues is that you normally tie your fenders to the guardrails, but they've thought of that too. You see these little stainless steel buttons? All the fenders have little clip-in uh, sort of spigots that just drop down in there, makes it incredibly easy. They're all set to the correct height, so you just pop them in and pop them out. Everyone can help. Diesel filler here, you'll have to be pretty careful not to overfill that because you don't want diesel spilling on that beautiful teak or indeed on that painted surface. Lovely, lovely pop-up cleats. Just look at that. Oh my goodness. Feels beautiful, looks beautiful. All branded up Solaris power. It is beautiful. And even here, look at the curvature on these superstructure mouldings. There's not a flat surface on this boat. It is all a thing of voluptuous beauty. 
Now, these here, these are the support poles for a bimini. So you can have a bimini at the front and the back, just means you've got a lovely sort of sh shaded, cool area. If it gets too hot during the midday sun, you can set your bimini up, lie out on this sun pad or sit at the little bench up front and get a bit of shade from the sun. Big single piece curved windscreen. Lovely big windscreen wipers. Straight flat sun pads, there's no prop up headrest or anything there, but there is a nice little bit of curvature just to give you a bit of support. And this is one of the places I love most, this bench here. Just a lovely spot to sit. Even here, the cushions, rather than having flat surfaces, you've got a lovely sculpted, slightly curved backrest. Lovely detailing, little pop-up osculati lights, cup holders, and look how beautiful all this teak work is here. So even though this is obviously uh, the anchor zone, everything is beautifully concealed and flush. It even has a pop-up winch. So that is an electric winch, pops up when you need it to pull in the bow lines. When you don't need it, it recedes into the deck there and you'd never know it was there. More of these lovely pop-up cleats. Got the wastewater pump out there. And check out this anchor system too. Look in here. Let me just lift this up. So you've got a quick electric windlass. There is a stainless steel ultra anchor hanging off the bow there. That obviously projects forward to make sure it clears the vertical bow. And here are these fenders that I was talking about. So this lovely fender rack all the way around here with these little pop out spigots. So if I just pull one out to show you, there you go. So it's all attached to the fender. You just take that round, pop it into the deck wherever you want it. And then when you need to put it away, it stows in here, little button to lock it in place. Small detail, but a rather beautiful one. Just carry on walking around. Some beautiful shapes in this hardtop moulding as well. A couple of opening windows, we'll see those from inside. And huge drop down side windows. That's a really key feature because even though it's a coupe boat and you can completely enclose that wheelhouse, it's lovely to be able to open it up on a nice day but check out the shape of this molding too. Even that nav light has a special little raised profile to sit on. And that extension there just provides a bit of shade and shelter for the side deck. But what a beautiful shape. It looks like a, I don't know, inspired by a dolphin or something. It's beautifully curved. And the finish is absolutely flawless. Right, let's take a bit of a look inside. We've got sliding doors, so that one slides across. We've got a big overhead window that opens up. So of course, when you put it all away, you've got a completely enclosed wheelhouse. Open it up, you've got a lovely open feeling. <laughs> Standard interior finish is matte oak. This one has teak. It is a highlight of the boat. It's incredibly warm. Lots of lovely detailing. You can see we've got sort of fluted rib surface. This is in fact the fridge. I know it's a pretty fancy looking fridge. Inside it's fairly normal, but on the outside, you've got that lovely surface. We've got a freezer down there. Galley over on this side, induction hob. Lots of storage under here. I think there is one rather lovely little feature that I might just show you if I can find it. We've got a lovely bespoke cutlery drawer. No cutlery in there at the moment, probably because it's a boat show and somebody would take a bit of a shine to it. But I believe there is also bespoke uh, sort of crockery and so on that will be installed later. We have got a dishwasher, stylish sink. There is a cover for that and that stows in there. Oh, I can't lift it one-handed, but it's wedged properly in there so it stays nice and secure. And of course, a pop-up tap. Dinette area over on the starboard side. Don't think it's got any particularly special tricks. It's on fixed legs, but very convenient for the galley opposite. And here are these big drop-down windows. 
And they are one of the defining features, I think, of this boat, having two huge drop-down windows. They're controlled from switches here. I'll just show you from inside, but they swing up nice and quickly too. Always one of the flaws sometimes of having electric windows. If they take forever and sound like they're graunching away, it rather spoils the point. We've got a pop-up high-low television. That just drops away in there. Might just get rid of that. Don't think we need that out for the moment. Always spoils, I think, a beautiful boat like this. They should always be tucked away wherever they can be. There we go. Put the lid down on that. And then step up to the helm area. Now, one of the slightly unusual things they've chosen to do here is they've got a big sunroof, as you'd expect, on a hardtop design, but it's over the aft section of the saloon, over the dinette here, rather than over the helm station. It's an interesting choice set. I mean, it, it, it works and it's lovely to have it at the back, but it just seems a little bit of a shame that you've got this large stretch of unfinished deck head above you here with no ventilation or skylights. It's nicely lit. We've got a few artificial lights in there, but it just seems to be rather nice to have a bit of extra light, a bit of extra air if you can do. On the other hand, you have got a helm window here. This is a manual one. It's just a simple squeeze and slide. Keeps it nice and simple and reliable. So you can lean out and shout at your crew to bring in the fenders. Big, broad helm station. It's actually almost excessively tall. You've got three screens on it. The helm sit seat is over on the sort of center line. So if I show you here, the helm is here. So always a bit of an issue. Sometimes if you have a second co-pilot sitting alongside you, you obviously have to move to let them out. On the other hand, it means you do get the best possible view over the top. I do find that this, these roofs tend to come down quite a long way, so it doesn't narrow the view forward a little bit. And there's some quite chunky mullions here too. So it'll be interesting to see how it works. It's almost better when you're sat down, it gives you a bit more vision. But one of the advantages of this hull shape is that it rides very flat. So hopefully it'll stay nice and flat and you'll maintain good vision forward. Another opening window on this side, exactly the same, just manual pull open and then drop down into the accommodation below. Now it is quite a steep drop down here, but you've got a handrail here. Breaker switches behind this panel here. And then quite an unusual setup they've done here. At the moment, they've kept it all open plan. You can, in fact, have an extra bulkhead down here to separate off the master forward cabin. But I must say, when you come down here, it's a really lovely effect. It feels really open and all this beautiful teak is on show. They've also removed the doors from some of the bathrooms, which I think is purely just for the boat show. It sort of keeps it all a bit more open and means people aren't constantly opening and closing doors, but it's slightly deceptive because clearly the door has got to open and swing somewhere. But this is the ensuite bathroom to the main cabin. If you have that bulkhead here, that of course comes down on this side of the bathroom. But same beautiful teak finish, separate walk-in shower, has got a little window there, always nice to have in the shower so it doesn't get too hot and steamy. And then you can see how far forward that beam comes, it is a really quite beamy design forward. So you've got plenty of space all the way around the bed, these lovely hull windows just about at eye level when you're propped up in bed. And plenty of headroom here. Look at that, we've got a good, probably foot and a bit above me, or certainly about a foot. Another little hatch that goes out onto the foredeck. We've got an overhead hatch, the sun cushions are obviously on there at the moment, but that would let in yet more light. We've got big mirrors, bouncing light around. Very lovely, clean finish. Shows off the teak to full effect. Got a bit of extra storage under the bed. Oh, press that button, there we go. Relatively shallow drawer. And some other small cupboards here and there. Not the most extensive storage I've ever seen on a boat, but rea realistically, it's probably gonna be one of those boats that a lot of the time is just used as a day boat. 
But then actually on this version, this is the three cabin version, and you can see we have actually got two good cabins back here too. So this is the VIP double. We've got a bulkhead here. There is a drop, we've got a step in the floor just as you come in, and then a step in the deck head as you come into. You need to watch your head on that a little bit, because when you come down, it's not quite, you do just have to stoop a little bit to get down on the bed. But once you're down, there's good sitting headroom, lovely hull windows, opening port, very nicely lit, feels lovely and open and bright down here, even at a boat show. Ensuite access to the bathroom. This is what we call a Jack and Jill bathroom. So this is what becomes the day head if you do have that separate forward owner's cabin. But a very good sized bathroom for a VIP. Plenty of space, sink, mirrors everywhere again, and a big separate walk-in shower. Again, with its own window and a lovely rain shower head. So now we're coming out, you can see that they've removed the door on this bathroom too, but this would be the access for the day heads on this side here, and then a third cabin. Now I'm told that this is relatively unusual. The standard layout is that this bulkhead separating these two cabins is moved further over this way. So you have a bigger VIP on the starboard side, and then you have a crew cabin, just a single crew cabin on this port side, which is actually accessed from the saloon up above. But in this version, it's kitted out as a twin guest cabin. And I have to say, I think it works rather well, actually. You've got two decent sized single beds in here. We've got that big hull window again, exactly matching the one opposite. So there's plenty of natural light. The artificial lighting isn't quite as good in here, but for a third cabin, it's not at all bad. Got the same slight drop in headroom, I have to crouch a little bit to sit on the bed here. Looks like slightly limited storage again. We have got a pull-out locker in there. There might be some storage under these beds, it looks like there is. Now this one doesn't have its own ensuite bathroom, but you can of course use access to the day heads there. Right, so let's pop back up. We will go and have a look at the engine room and discuss what kind of performance that will get you. Right, access is through this rather small hatch. So I'm very much hoping that you can get through the tender garage if you actually need to get anything out. So as well, it's fine to actually drop down as a person, you're gonna to struggle to get any substantial bits of kit in or out. Okay, here we are in the engine room. Now this boat is fitted with twin IPS drives. The standard engine is IPS 650, which should give you a top speed of around 28 knots. This has got the optional IPS 800 800s fitted, which should be good for 32 knots. Now, once you're down here, there is masses of space. You can get round both the engines, absolutely fine. I believe because this is in a boat show, they've actually removed the pods themselves, but you can see where they slot in behind the engines there. We've got a lot of space forward of the engines too. Now it has twin tanks. You can see one fuel tank there, one there. They're a thousand litres each. So that should give a good range, probably of around a couple of hundred miles, I'm guessing. You can see there is a traditional sight gauge there to see how full it is. Got the fuel filters, generator, and so on. So that is the tender garage you can see that sort of intrusion above the engines there. And I'm hoping that that is, would also give access if you wanted to get an engine or a generator or sea keeper installed in here. That was the new Solaris Power 52 Coupe. Always an attractive boat to look at. So much style, so much detail, and something a bit different. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next one.